Burgers. That's bullshit. Breakfast. All right, today's breakfast is brought to you by pie. By pie. Uh, and why pie? Why pie? Well, one is to enjoy, and the other one is to measure circumferences. Whatever. It's not, is it? It's yeah. to build pyramids with. No, no. This is for round stuff, buddy. Like pie? Like pie. <gasps> 3.14. What about cake? Well, I've that's... I've seen round cakes I, before. Sometimes, yeah, round. That's 3.14. Round is the word today. <laughs> round. Just for you folks that happen to watch like this. Like this. Round. Yeah, round. I was, I was I was in the bathroom when Karen was getting well, well, dressed. Where are we at? Where are we at? To let everybody know where we're at. We are at Terry's place. In Murfreesboro. That's Murfreesboro. We drove all the way to Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. From Nashville. Yeah. Tennessee. You know, Arkansas just didn't have a, you know, some kind of a critical thought in naming their town. I mean, didn't wasn't Murfreesboro, Tennessee first, and then yeah. Nashville, I mean, Tennessee come first and then come Arkansas. up with an original yeah, something. idea like Washington. Yeah, <laughs> everybody uses Washington. Yeah, Washington. We could have called it Washington. Now, it's possible that Washington, old Washington, here in Arkansas, could have been the first Washington, and then everybody else. Well, no, no, wait. Yeah, you've got to go back a few more years than you're, you're playing with. Yeah, because we had the... Uh, the we're, we're in Murfreesboro, Arkansas, where they find diamonds. Y'all should come on down and do some digging. And swing by Terry's. It's definitely eat at Terry's three times a day. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Yeah, this is called Terry's Place. This is good coffee. You come in, you sit down, you behave. And they'll treat you right. Yep. Show show your butt, and yeah. then you won't <laughs> get treated right. Are Are you Terry? I'm not Terry, but Terry will be here shortly. Terry, is she a terror, or is he a terror? She is not a terror. Hey, but what? She can be. What happened to the um, Camaro? Hood that was up here last time we were here before it closed and then opened again. I remember that. We were commenting on it. We last were making a comment. I think that was before it was called, before Terry took over. Terry's only been open since December 8th. Oh, okay, okay. No. Oh, all right. I mistook the vehicle. I like, the, I like the color scheme though. Can I tell you something about this color? Yeah. Now, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same color. But you remember back in the days, all your installations had uh, red and white checkered yeah. water towers and stuff? Well, they changed that because they found out that um, pilots, you know, because they were up there for the pilots, you know, don't right. run into our water towers. So they found out that they don't really see that as well as... They started painting them this aqua blue looking color or green, and that sticks out like a sore thumb on the f when you're flying. But you would think that that would blend in more with the terrain. Not this color. I'll be darned. I mean, unless you're sitting in a, um, you know, a mine full of, you know, turquoise. Yeah, that would blend. Yeah. Okay. So I, I didn't think about that. It's an unnatural color, that's what I'm saying. Uh, seems like it would be natural. Let me twist this just a little what, bit. What are you worried? Just a little Look bit. Look at this. He's not getting enough of him in there. Well, she's not staying tight either. Cheap Chinese stuff. Yeah, we came here to crack you up. That's... Oh, you're doing a great job. Oh, uh, yeah. I think our last visit to Taco Bell was okay. That was a good visit. Yeah. Boy, he was plugging Taco Bell like nobody's business. He should be a spokesman for Taco Bell. I'm like, oh, Lord. Okay, I judge fast food places by how well you can eat it in the car without making a mess. 
And Taco Bell, hand down, has that crunch wrap. It does not fall out. And if you need to get going and drive, that's my thing. You need to get the crunch wrap. Yeah. McDonald's, the number one, the McMuffin, you know. <laughs> it doesn't fall apart. A biscuit, I love a biscuit, but not while I'm driving. It's all, it's all by design, too. They have like a, 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 a legion of engineers who's coming up with that. It's got to be feng shui. Is that straight now? Well, I, I don't know. I can't tell straight anymore. <laughs> I, uh, it's because of our pie. I put it because <laughs> of our pie. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I uh, put those bars up in the shower, like I told you. <laughs> well, they're supposed to go at an angle anyway, well, sort of, kind of. They can. But I'm waiting for Liz to... I mean, she finally noticed it. I didn't say You'll anything. just see the ones I've installed. Yeah. Yeah, that's but by design. I'm waiting for her because it's a... The longer bar at the back of the shower is just a little bit off. And I've got an explanation for her. Because I, I'm just like, I don't want to... I just got them done, right? <laughs> I uh, kind of eyeballed it and it's like... Okay, whatever. Who needs a level Yeah. when you got pie? Yeah, uh, and so I... I noticed later that, yeah, that one's a little bit off. And then the one that's, as you're getting into the shower, yeah. is right here. That one's a little bit off. But I'm waiting. I don't think Liz will notice that one. But she'll notice this other one, and I'm just going to tell her, well. It's going to make her eye twitch. I, yeah, I won't be able to take a shower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's crooked. No. I, I'm, I'm going to just tell her, well, I put it at an angle so that the water doesn't stay in one spot and it all comes to one end and drips. Oh, How about that, huh? That is clever. I'm telling you, that's what I'm full of. You get a gold I star for that clever. one. Is that Terry? That is not Terry. That's Melody. That's Melody. Hi, Melody. Nice. You're Terry's cousin. cousin. Yes. I'm his brother, but I don't tell everybody that. No. <laughs> uh, okay. So we probably should uh, move forward on this. I can tell you right now what I'd like. Okay, cool. I'd like your full stack of uh, pancakes. Okay. And uh, do you have honey? Okay. Okay, great. Hey, well, you know what? Let's just back up on that. Okay. How good are your pancakes? They're my favorite. Best in the country? Yeah. I would say absolutely. Okay. Secret recipe, Terry's. Yes. You know what? Instead of saying he's buying, I'm going to get you pancakes special. Special, okay. Yeah. That's what I was looking at is pancakes special. How do you get your eggs cooked? Um, sunny side up. Okay. And um, I'll take, uh, what's the ham? What, what is that? It's country ham. Big slice, mm -hmm. about that thick. Mm, it's, it is thick. It is. I don't know how exactly. Trish. Oh, don't. I'm just giving you a hard time. You don't have to ask. It is. It, it's a pretty big piece. So, I'll go with that. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I want okay. my eggs over medium, and you can put my ham on his plate. Okay. And, the, yeah, the hash brown. You want hash browns? It, it comes with yes, hash yes. browns. Do you want hash browns also? Uh, might as well. Okay. Might as well just screw my cardio thing up all day. Yeah. Coffee is one thing, but now you're really going to clog things yeah, up. Yeah. You don't want to see my cardiologist. He'll my, uh, I'm getting my knees replaced, and I'm going through the motions of seeing every. I, I can't wait until I have to sit down with Sigmund Freud to say why I'm, you know, why am I getting my knees replaced? And that's but, probably coming. Yeah, it probably is. So anyhow, I, I got to go to the. Never, I've never been to one, but now I am. So. Everybody's got to say it's okay for this old guy to get my knees done. Yeah. I understand. My cardiologist says, get out of here. i got sick people to deal with. <laughs> oh, brother. You're seeing a cardiologist. I hope I don't have to for a long time. You're not old enough. You're still a pup. <laughs> yeah, that's it's it. not the years. It's the mileage, right? I know. I get you. I understand. Yes. Yes. I know. I'm, it's the years. I'm getting there. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you think. I don't believe that. Well, don't even. She can't be. She that. can't be don't more than nineteen. That. Do not pursue and, that. You know, it doesn't bother me. I, it, well, that bothers me that it bother, doesn't bother you. And see, she's no, trying to get it. That is. That, it bothers me to get older, but it doesn't bother me for somebody to ask how old I am. I don't get offended that way. Is what um, I'm saying. How old are you? Don't. 
Do it. Don't do it. See? You see? She her. just got offended. See? I knew I'd trigger her. Oh, see now now it's even. Don't do it. Stop. <laughs> She is setting you up for failure. I know, and that happened. Haven't she was, you been down that road? Oh, yeah. Like I said, it's not the years. It's the mileage. Yeah. Don't, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess that you're at a really nice age. How's that? That's the politician in me. Yep. You did good. That's why I said a day over 19, not a day over 19. See, I'm older than him. I know these things. Yeah. Okay. Not the years, it's so, the mileage. But uh, went to an auction uh, Saturday. Yeah. It was quite interesting. It was in uh, Mount Ida. Was your marble buddy there? No, I haven't seen him in two auctions. Hmm. I'm starting to worry about him now. You might ought to reach out to him. Well, if I, I don't have his phone. Oh. I'm going to definitely get it, though. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've, I've got phone numbers for... I met a gentleman, I was at the uh, uh, consignment auction in Glenwood, and, you know, like I've explained, how they'll come to the end of it, and all the stuff that people don't really want, you know, they'll throw it in a bucket, money, you know, whatever, and there were two Hillary um, mm. for president, uh, uh, right, right. and I'm like, I'm going to get those, you know, right, right. and so I I bought it for like three bucks, all this pile of crap, and, and those two signs, and this guy walks up, and he goes, no, oh, what are you going to do with those? I says, eh, I'm put them on eBay, sell them twenty five bucks a piece. He goes, Oh, really? And so I, you know, got it and everything. He comes up to me later and he says, uh, said something about politics or whatever. And I, I and I, I looked at him. I'm like, Are you a Democrat? He goes, He goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're in Glenwood. <laughs> and this guy lives Primeville, Pineville, Primeville. Some place like you're going to Mina out of uh, Mount Ida or whatever. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, okay, you know, you know where you're at, right? And he, and so I says, well, hey, you want one of these? And he says, really? I'm like, yeah, I'll give you one. He says, oh, great, I'd like to have that. I'm like, you're welcome to it. So, <laughs> so looking around, you know, I'd taken it to the car and everything, looking around. Here you go. <laughs> He's like, Runs to his truck and Open throws it up in my there. coat. <laughs> Look at all these Hillary signs I've got. But uh, his name is uh, Bob Bob Galloway. I think Bob Calloway or something. Bob Galloway or something like that. Uh, uh, great guy. Relative of Cab Calloway. I don't know. Oh, okay. But he introduced me to a gentleman that was with him. They'd come down together, and uh, uh, he, I asked him. You know, you know, he introduced himself and. His last name is is awful, and he says, "Just say awful." That's what everybody says. My <laughs> name is awful, so that's how I, you know, I remembered him. And uh, uh, but I got, you know, I put this information down on my phone because you know you see somebody one time, and you're gonna forget, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that's what I do. But I'm gonna do that with him. And uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, you need to you need to get contact of uh, Marble guy. Yeah. The yeah, arrow, he, arrow rider. He, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of marbles, okay, and the highly collectible ones. He he was he's got some. I know he does. But sure, he does. He, he told me about one that he found um, at a estate auction, and it was just it was in its own little container. There were other marbles, but this one was just in its own little container. You could barely tell what it was. But it was, it's what's called an onion skin marble. And it was, a, he said, it's about this big. I'm onion like, really? I, I'm like, you own an onion skin? He goes, yeah. And he says, uh, I the, bought it. Well, what's an onion skin? It, it was marbles uh, that were made in Germany. And uh, it, uh, they're, uh, it's hard to explain. They're layered, layered marbles. Uh, but anyhow, he told me, he says, I bought this marble. And he said, there was a little note inside, and it was talking about that marble, oh, how wow. it had been handed down in the family. Oh, wow. wow. And he says, I got the name of the family. He says, he says, I've been contemplating giving it back because it's almost like family. That's an heirloom. Yeah, and uh, he says, but... For a price. He said, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's that kind of guy. He's like, okay. you know, he's like me, you know. 
if I've got something I think you'll get a kick out of, I'd right. rather give it to you and watch watch your expression. Than Especially have to, if you'll give away a coveted Hillary sign. You know? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know. Well, that, I still got mine. It's pretty bad. So, <laughs> as long so as I've got one. But uh, but anyhow, but this guy, awful. Uh, Bob started telling me about him. You know, yeah, he says, uh, yeah, he used to train snipers for the Army. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, well, that's that guy's Vietnam age, you know, yeah. era age, yeah. you know. And, yeah. and uh, I said, really? And he said, told me this incredible story that about, he's, Bob's telling me the story about him. <laughs> you know, I'm sure the guy's like, you know. But he uh, embellish a little. He, uh, he went to boot camp at, uh, um, I don't know, have I, have I ever told you the story? I haven't heard this Okay, one. he went no. to boot camp at, um, um, uh, the, uh, where's the gold at in, uh, Fort, in Kentucky? Fort, oh. Um, I can't think of the name. Not Knox. Yeah. Fort, Fort Knox. Knox. Fort yeah, Knox. he went to boot camp at Fort Knox. And um, so, l- long story short, uh, he's going through boot camp. Everything's fine until he went to the rifle range and uh, got down and shot. And uh, his sergeant uh, was looking at the you know how well these guys are doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, this guy was really good. Okay, and uh, so the, marched you know sent the guys back to the barracks and uh, made him stay there and shoot some more. Oh, yeah. And uh, basically, long story short, come to be that um, he was the best shooter Fort Knox has ever seen. Uh, he beat the records, all the records before, okay? So he could pop a squirrel eye at a thousand yards. Yeah. Running. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, so anyhow, long story short, he's, he ended up the favorite of the sergeant. Oh, yeah. And what happened was when it was time to, to graduate, you know, the, you know how it works. You're out on this big uh, field and stuff, and everybody's marching and all this stuff. His sergeant told him, "Look, you're not going with the group." And he, okay, so they they all marched up to. Did the, I not gadget? <laughs> <laughs> and so he, uh, uh, they all marched up, and he says, "Here," gave him his keys to his car. He says, "You drive up." You're kidding no. me. I'm like, wow. I'm looking at him like, your sergeant gave you the keys to your his car to drive up there to the uh, parade grounds? And he goes, yeah. And so I drove up there and everything, and I'm walking up looking for my group and everything. And he said, the base commander walks out into the middle of the field with a trophy and presented this trophy to him. Oh, wow. For being the best marksman ever at Knox. Oh, Wow. And uh, wow. and he said it changed my trajectory too. He says they uh, I didn't graduate with the other guys. You know, it's during Vietnam and everything. He said I didn't. Yeah. I, I graduated, but I didn't go with them. He said uh, they held me back, and he became a trainer to, on how to shoot. You know, yeah, you know, for snipers and stuff. Yeah, and uh, long, a pretty cool story. I'm like, wow, I'm, you know. Uh, but anyhow, that's Mr. Awful. So his MOS was not to leave. The base. Right. He was to stay there and train snipers. And train. Yeah, and he went someplace else and started training snipers. Wow. And I asked him. I said, "Well, did you did you uh, rotate over to uh, Vietnam?" He says, "No." Didn't even do yeah. a tour up there. No, nope, didn't have to. How are we doing? I'm like, you gotta be kidding. You're so Celer- good. It saved your life. I says, "That's." I says, "You're." I, I says, what, "What's the guy's name out of uh, um, Benton, Carlos?" Oh. The, oh, uh, the famous sniper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gosh, I can't believe I can't think of his Carlo, name. Carlos. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, I says, well, so you're the the other Carlos, and I knew the name that day, and uh, he is. It, he says, they're both looking at me like, who's that? <laughs> I'm like, well, I says, you ever read any Stephen Hunter books? And and they're like, no. <laughs> Oh, thanks for the honey. Butter. Butter, yeah. Got to have butter. That one's yours. Thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, 
So I told him, I says, well, yeah. I says, you you know, well, okay. I says, you ever heard of the movie Shooter? Oh, love that movie. Bob's saying this. Love that movie. I says, well, that was uh, Hathcock. Hathcock? Carlos Hathcock? Yeah. Yeah. Hathcock. Hack. I guess. And uh, ooh, look at all that food. Yeah. Uh, is, thank you. That is a nice piece of hand. Wow. Good pancakes. Mm. You have to let me know what you think. Well, I do have a standard. Well, if you do, if we <laughs> don't meet it, let us know what we can do to meet it. You'll have to go to St. Paul, Minnesota to, to learn. Is that where you're originally from? Why, don't I have enough southern accent no. for your taste? Sure don't. We, well, I'm not from here either. So. Well, where are you from? from Alaska? South Carolina. South Carolina. Are you from Greenville or Spartanburg? Spartanburg. Oh, I had a guy in the Air Force from Spartanburg. Mark Garrett, I bet you knew him. Yeah. Small town. Small state. Small town. Little little state. Little state. No, I don't know Mark Garrett. Yeah. Spartanburg. Spartanburg. Of course, of course, the problem is is you're not old enough to know, so that's not true. It's not a day over nineteen. Yeah, <laughs> But uh, anyhow, I, I mentioned that. I said, well, you heard of the movie Shooter? And yeah, I said, well, you know, Hunter's books, you know, the book uh, Point of Impact was about was from that. I said, of course, it's a movie. There's a lot of stuff that's not in that book. but Not embellishing. Yeah, but I says, uh, I says yeah, that's Hathcock. He was one of the most famous uh, snipers. And then they go, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, kind of cool. I see him every once in a while at the consignment room. And uh, Mr. Awful, I haven't seen Bob in a while. They must have drug him off and, you know, you're a Democrat. Well, <laughs> he told me, he says, uh, you got to be careful. around here, are you, boy? He told me, he says, you got to be careful what you say where I'm at. <laughs> I'm like, really? And I says, okay, well, you know. Again, middle of nowhere. Well, wow! Look at that ham, hey, man. I'm glad you don't eat meat. I am. Uh, enjoy. I am. But yeah, I'm starting to keep my keep a list of names and stuff and get information on <laughs> these guys because they're very interesting folks. Did I tell you about going to the archives? Did you go? Yes, I did. Uh huh. What'd and you find? Well, uh, Washington was having their junk wool. Junk wool, yeah. Karen uh, and I were there. Oh, were you? On on that Saturday, yeah. Yeah, I was there. Well, you we were there. I don't know what time you were there, but um, Liz wanted to buy some stuff. Uh, there's a lady that comes down from Russellville and makes up these flower arrangements for uh, um, visit the graveyard day. You know. Oh, okay. What do they call that in Mexico? Day of death or something. Walking death, I don't know. Isn't that where they dig them up and parade them and then throw them back in the dirt? Something like that. <laughs> oh, what religion makes us do. Ah, well. But anyhow. A new phrase I picked up. Institutional religious system. Oh, you're just catching on to that, huh? Uh-huh. Um, so, anyhow, I dropped her off. I had the dogs with me, so I thought, I'll just go down to the archives mm -hmm. building and just park there. Mm -hmm. Liz could call me. Well, well, did you go in? They're open on Saturday. Yeah. And Very I went cool. in here. Very cool. Got my library card to do stuff, and and uh, guy took me for a tour and everything. And I was telling him about the Poison Spring stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The curator, the head curator, while we're talking, she walks by. Hi, how are you doing? Went into the library, come back out, shows me a book on the Poison Springs battle. You're kidding me. Yeah. I'm like, okay. She said, I heard you guys talking. The best? Very nice. Good. You? What? Good. Morning. Morning. 
Morning. But I finally, uh, the guy was showing me the library and everything, and uh, he pointed out this book. He says, yeah, we got a book here written. He goes, very salacious. Now, I'm like, really? really? And I don't know when it was written. It was written a long time ago. It's called the... Uh, um, Cornbread, the Cornbread Aristocrat. And it's about this guy that. Cornbread Aristocrat. Yeah, yeah, it's about this guy that's just scrogging on everybody, you know, he can and, and taking people for their money and stuff like that. Kind of. I'm like, okay, that's going to be my next read. And a lot of people have read it, huh? Never heard of it. Of course, I have to read first in order to. Well, I'm glad you made it to um, the archive building. Well, and that set me on another mission. They have basically, the, you know, remember the old library cards and stuff? They've got mm -hmm. a cabinet with all the cards oh, yeah. from the old... Oh, you know this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They have a clunky uh, computerized search system, and then they've got the uh, Dewey Decimal System card catalog. Yeah, well, I'm... I'm thinking that we might, I might be able to find some more information on Grandpa Joe. It's got to be something in there for about him. Our Grandpa Joe. Okay, Karen and I were having this discussion, and I said, "Yeah, Joe's name is both Grandpa's names. Joe, who is Dad's." No. No, it was mom's dad. And Thomas is dad's dad. Right. Right. Um, but you know, did I tell you that I went to the Mason's Lodge there in Derrick's and they weren't open? I've never seen anybody there, but I went there and wrote a rather lengthy note looking for information about Grandpa. Never heard anything back. I'm like, okay, I'm not sure how to get through the front door of this stuff. No, you don't. You're getting water. Uh, to get think, information. I think you have to be a Mason to do that. Well. But I, I talked to, I got in touch with a gentleman that, that belongs to that. And he didn't, he didn't know much about him either. So. Well. What I understand, um, Joe Taney, Aaron's boss, is a Mason. Mm -hmm. And uh, because one of the trunks that Mary had had Mason, had the apron and, and some other material that belonged to a gentleman up in Arkadelphia or something like that. Mm -hmm. We gave it to Joe, and he was able to get that back to the family. So maybe maybe I should just talk to Joe and see if he can you know, that would be a front door to get in and get, get you know, I'm not interested in joining or anything like that. I just wanna see if there's any historical information on well, our grandpa. I'm gonna check in the archives and see if you know, look up his name and, and see what it does say about him. I'm not so much worried about the Mason X. No, aspect. I'm not either. I want to know more about, you know, what he did in the community and stuff like that. Right. Because I would think some of that would be recorded. Um. Yeah. Now, was uh, Grandpa Green affiliated with any of that, or is just uh, I asked Dad Grandpa said Newton? No. Said no. I'm, I'm kind of thinking that, too. Mm -hmm. 
Mary, you don't have to die from that. Don't start. Don't start. Play the game. Do I want to die? No, you want to die. Not, I, I lost. So maybe you don't know. Christy lost. Christy lost. 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 You lost. So, <laughs> my cousin. Where are you going? No, you got to get you. Got to Beverly. You got to listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was looking for she had texted me and said hey I want to show my friend that video you've done yeah, music video you did of Comfortably Numb and I can't find it I said alright well give me a second I'll dig in the old Facebook videos and yeah I was there after the 10,000 videos I did of dad's scrapbook <laughs> finally found it and shared it with her and she says by the way when are you going to do my song now this song she wants me to do is the sound of silence from disturbed and when she first asked me about it they had just got it out published it out on the market and I'm like no too soon you know I'm not going to I'm not going to do that mm -hmm. well you know periodically she says I know you can do this song and I'm like no I can't sing in that range I said this guy trained hard to pull this off I said, and he's a I think he's his uh, skill sets are uh, I don't think it's opera singing but he has that kind of formal background hmm. um, so <laughs> I, I said, all right, listen, I, I, I said, I'll, I'll give it a try. So I set up a recording session, and now I've got the backtracks for it for session players who did it as Light Disturbed version. <clears throat> and I'm singing it. Okay, and this song's in, the original key's in F sharp minor. And I drop it down to F minor. Because his high range, he's got a great vocal range. And I'm, uh, so I'm singing this thing, and I'm telling you what, you know, when I get to those high spots, my eyes start bleeding. <laughs> my sphincter goes like this. Anything to help. Yeah. And I'm, I did about six tries, at six takes of it, and I said, I gotta walk away. I gotta, I gotta train up for this, because I'm not gonna butcher it. These guys, you know, that's just disrespectful. So unless you're weird Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to parody it, but I, I told her I said I, I did a little short video on it. And I said. I commit to try, but I'm not committing that I'll deliver. <laughs> wasn't the lead singer, singer of Journey, wasn't he a, a trained... Mm, yeah, he was. Uh, Steve Perry? Yeah. Yeah. God, what a voice. Oh, oh a beautiful God. voice. And that's the thing. A lot of these guys, I mean, like uh, Queen, all those guys, you know, they're, you know, Juilliard musicians and things like that. There's a lot of them out there that their background is just amazing background. One of, one of the, let's see, the guitars of Queen? I mean, he was a physicist. Yeah. Let me just do this for fun. You know. Yeah, look what that caused you. All right, I got to make mention of it. Our other cousin, Alan. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> uh, the podcast he gave, you know, sent me about Flat Earth. <clears throat> Just remember, that's how you measure circumference. <laughs> <laughs> and I, when I was looking at that, I thought, okay, let me bring up Flat Earth. And, uh, um, I, I mean, the, first of all, the fellow that was leading the discussion, he had some interesting points that probably 10 minutes of research will debunk it. But I'm like, 
Okay, yeah. Why do I see the Big Dipper all seasons of the year? I don't know. But I just can't accept the fact that the Earth is flat with a big dome over it. Well, I think you ought to pay your dues and jump on the... No, I'd rather... Uh, spaceship and take a good look. I'd rather just run with rumors. <laughs> it's rumored that the Earth is round. Well, does that mean all the other planets are round, uh, flat too? Or just the Earth? Uh -huh. And here's the other question. What does it matter? And why does it matter? Is it because somebody's telling us a lie? Gee, oh God. it's got to be government. Uh, that's a Rothschild. I saw it. <laughs> I saw a meme. It said, uh, if, if, the, if the earth is flat, cats would have pushed everything off the edge. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. There's proof enough for me. <laughs> That's gold star right there. That is gold star. This is a brick. I forgot this is brick. So I better really. I bet you. I bet you bought that at the junk store. No, no. This actually. No. Oh. Yeah. It was hand. It was hand painted for me. Oh. My um. First cousin's wife. It's very talented. She does things all the time. And I told her to make me something. So this is what she made me. And that's what she made you? Yeah. But I think that's pretty. Yeah. Yep. Because it goes with my... This is Terry. I'm Terry. I'm the Terry. But I don't know where I'm putting it. Um, Order. What about under the counter? Center. Like right there? Yeah. Well, eventually I want a bar right there, but you think kids would mess with that? Yes. No, we got all them regular babies that are in here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, kids would mess with that. Right, right. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the little ones. Yeah. You could take the It's about kids, you wouldn't understand. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I can it's about the pudding people. It ain't as easy. I got some. But something like that, I don't have I need more coffee. How about you? Nope. I'm sticking to one. You good? Sticking to one? I'd come to you. So. Yeah. All right. All right. I think that's good. It's off center, but no, that's just a little. Gotta, that's my OCD. A oh, I didn't even see that stanchion. Yes, that's even better. I don't have a um, bag on it yet. I'm gonna go to the hardware and get the bag. I'm yeah. gonna figure it out. And I, I got um, Tori sent a little pool table home for. Can I? Can I? Can breakfast. I hold that for a second? Your wonderful picture. Isn't that beautiful? Now, this was your niece that made this? Yes. Beautiful. She just she just told her about you asking her age. No, I didn't. And they don't want to have anything to do with I did not. I your... said they're videoing. I didn't know you were videoing. I didn't even pay attention to anything. Oh, that's all right. No. Just be yourself. Nope. It's not even there. My first cousin Mark's wife, Jeanette. No. Jeanette Woods is who made this. Jeanette one. Woods. She's a local artist that everyone is familiar with. Absolutely. And that's my goal. Like, um... Oh, not so much now, because just that right there, the good food, good mood, that was actually handmade by a friend. But a lot of my Christmas stuff that I had in here, I got local artistry to do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But my goal is to get some of the local people that are very talented. So, Absolutely. So, I know you're from Nashville. I am from Nashville. Remember crepe myrtles when you get ready. <laughs> Wait a minute. Me. How are you doing? You know, and I, 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 and I just totally blew off your text. Oh, you did. And I'm a loser you for doing so. Yeah. No, well, I'm like, okay, yeah, she's, re, she's hitting me up about the crepe myrtles and cutting them. You right. know, cutting I, it was them just time to start doing them, so I just was reaching back up. And I told Karen, I said, oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I had your name. Bridget. Yeah, and I. That's why I said I, I go. She, she texted me about it, and then I saw a shiny thing, and, you know, I've got someone up at the Mina Theater who had texted me 
many months ago, and I'm like, oh, shiny thing, forgot. You know, she want, had a technical question. Anyway. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just saw you, and I thought, I just reached out to you. Well, thank you. I'm going to put that in my pocket. All right. See you later, Mr. Uh, these folks did uh, uh, our uh, crepe noodles. Well, I, I talked to her about the crepe myrtles. I said, I, you know, I want to cut them down to the stinking ground. And they said they surely could do that. Well, she cleaned up the hydrate, not the hydrate, just um, along the driveway. They're not hydrangeas, they're something else. Anyway, they cleaned all that whole bed up along the driveway and got that all squared away. But then she reached out again about the crepe myrtles, and I like, feel kind of crappy that I just kind of blew her off. And I'm like, oh, you know, saw a shiny thing. It wasn't, wasn't intentional. It was just... What, what is she doing? What? <laughs> Look, made me, made me twitch. It's Roku. Oh, Roku. A curse. Yes, you too could Roku. Roku. I was talking to Dave yesterday, and he was talking about, you know, when you get older and how stuff doesn't mean anything, you know, and all that. We reach out. Yeah. And the older you get, uh, the more you realize that your time is limited on everything. Mm -hmm. okay. He was at the VA and uh, for, uh, I, he didn't say what it was, but he says they were telling him it's going to probably take most of the morning. <laughs> kind of like you. I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody fact, got, I don't know how much I got, but I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I had just said something to Liz. <laughs> Before he called, and I was just thumbing through my the Roku and stuff, and it's like, oh my God, there is so much, <laughs> and I got to thinking, still got to thinking about it. You know, at my age, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff here that is very interesting, but I don't have the time. <laughs> So I really have to focus on a little bit more of the genres I like, you know. Right. And I, you know, I was telling Liz, I says, yeah, you know, I don't have the time. I, you know, I don't have enough time on Earth to look at all this. Stuff. So it's not like you don't have enough time. You don't have enough time on Earth to right spend on that stuff. On that, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, anyhow, you have chosen wisely. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I told Dave, I said, that's so funny you said that, because I had the same kind of thought today. You know, and, that, and that's what it is. It's, I don't look at it like that. It's like, I don't have any. My interest level in things is just plummeted. I just don't care. Yeah. I just don't care. I just, you know, I, I bumped into a musician at um, Walmart the other day, and... and uh, He's looking for the drummer. He's looking for a new drum set. And I said, well, I've got three of them also. You know, for you to choose from. I said, bring a lot of Benjamins. <laughs> I said, don't think you're going to get it for a hundred bucks. But I'm like, I don't care. I, I, I don't even play on my drums anymore. Well, and the other thing is, is this is old wisdom talking. Oh, geez. I think about all the things I collected, and I got to thinking, I mean, yeah, I've got these knives, and I, I collected those specifically because the damn things trade like commodities, okay? Right. Which I knew they did, and they still do. But all kinds of other stuff, I'm like, why did I collect that? I like to look at it, but after a while, you don't want to look at it. You like to show it to people. Well, nobody comes over. Right. Which, which is fine with me. Uh, you know, and that's the same. Oh, by the way, you know what today is, right? Yeah, my... Besides your cardiologist visit. What? It's Mary's birthday. Oh, yeah, 25th. That's right. That's right. Happy birthday, sis. Uh, I know you don't care right now, but uh, here we are. 
That's not true. I know you care about me. <laughs> and you're thinking about me right now. Yeah. You want to sit down? You want some of my pancakes? <laughs> we miss you, girl. We really miss you. Oh, absolutely. Um, anyway, I, um, yeah. I mean, well, the reason why that came up is because, you know, when I did that online bartending mix, mixology, well, Mary takes that stuff and runs with it, right? Oh, look what I found. This cute little thing about how you put your shark glasses in and it's this... And, and at the time, it was really cool. Now all this stuff is sitting on a sideboard collecting dirt. And I'm like, okay, it's time to marketplace this stuff because, you know, I don't care. And all the, you know, all the mixing stuff, I gave all that to you. Yeah. Um. Yep, that's what happens when you get old. You I know. It. Whatever. Like, whatever. Um, so, I wanted to tell you about my, this auction I went to. I'll tell you. There are people that go to those auctions with four to five thousand dollars in their pocket because they were definitely bidding that stuff up. Wow! But it was unique because um, the person that had this estate, she was big into crystals. Mm. She was big into Native American stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. Unique stuff. I mean, she right. had really some nice pieces, bows and arrows and stuff like that. But every time I look at that, I think I only saw one piece that I thought might have been authentic. But the rest of it is, you know, tourist trade and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And, uh, but this lady had crystals, boulders, okay? She had done landscaping with giant boulders and crystal running through it. A bunch of so, Mount Ida stuff, huh? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and the uh, auctioneers are selling off all this stuff, right? So I'm sitting there and waiting for them to come over where I was interested in stuff. Are you done with this? Let me have one more squirt. I prefer honey, but... Because I'm sure someone else could use it. But uh, anyhow, so I'm sitting there and this lady walks up and we're talking and everything. And, and uh, she's all happy, you know. She bought this boulder. <laughs> I mean, it's as big as that thing. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. How's she going to load that thing up? <laughs> okay. Well, it wasn't going in her back of her car, that's for sure. So I says, oh, so you did that. Huh? I said, you're going to do some landscaping? She says, well, we have some cabins up by the lake. And, oh. And, uh, you know, going to pretty it up a little bit and everything. I says, and oh. someone will come and take those things while you're down in the town. No, they're not going to take that one. Mm. And I told her, I says, well, how do you plan on getting that? Because <laughs> I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you're going to need about a Cat 360 you know, excavator to pick that thing up. Yeah, you know? you're not going to do it with a forklift. And you, Yeah. And uh, she mentioned forklifts. So I'm like, no, no. you're never going to get a forklift out in the yard. And I, and I told her, I said, yeah, my recommendation is to get a, a large excavator and then get a and then get a good trailer to put it on because you're not going to put that on your little 14 footer single axle lawnmower yeah. trailer. And uh, but she did that didn't deter her. She was all happy about that. And I'm like, wow, people are buying boulders here. And they really were buying stuff. I'm, and oh, just jacking it right up, which is fine. I mean, I, I'm not. I mean, that's a benefit to the yeah person yeah, no, I, I, who's I selling all this stuff. Yeah. If I can't out, you know, if I can't get it for a certain price point, I'm not. You know, there'll be another one someday. I've learned that big time. Don't don't cry over it. Just there'll be another. It's, yeah, you know, wasn't meant to be. But uh, had some really neat stuff. I I ended up buying a. Uh, uh, a, a cedar flute, a Native, Native American flute, uh, but it didn't have the reed, so, you know, I don't know, and I'm just going to, you know, sell that outright, All right. and then I bought a pot that I should have, you know, I, I don't you know. shouldn't have? 
I, well, I did. I mean, I'm not going to lose anything, but I'm not going to make anything on it. Right. But it's, it's you know. The, you have to calculate your time involved, too. You yeah, know, on the Southwest stuff. Indians have figured out what, you know, what the tourists want. And this is one of those things. Unique piece. Looks cool. Yeah. But um, it's called a uh, um, Navajo horsehair pottery and uh, you know they I don't know they mix horse hair in it or something like that I, and it is a cool piece it's a wedding uh, pot it's got two spouts on it and oh okay okay I think I know what you're talking about I've seen yeah. those yeah yeah and it's it's a nice big piece it's not a little one but you know uh, you just really have to play be careful with that you know yeah. and that kind of, especially that kind of stuff yeah uh, to run onto a unique piece was it made by an artisan? Yeah, it's got, the, okay. yeah, but they're make you know, you know, I could see these guys, you know, downtown Arizona, oh, yeah. you know, and uh, big warehouse, and they're pumping this stuff out left and right for the tourist trade. I mean, come on, we know how it goes. And I understand that. And so, and that's what I don't want to get, but like I said, I'm not going to lose, I'm just not going to, not going to, no, not going to be any big gains on that one, but uh I bought a, I bought some, some uh, a box of rocks, okay, and uh, yeah, I probably paid too much for them too, right. but I'm looking. Tia, Tia collects crystals and rocks. And right. stuff like that. She, I think Diane set her on that. Yeah, and so she she's got a great collection, and I'm looking at these pieces. I'm like, eh, you know, she might uh, she might get a kick out of this, and uh, but I thought, well, I'm going to take a look at it. Well, in the middle of it was this big chunk of metal, you know, and, and I'm like, I'm like, at first I'm, you know, of course, I'm not focusing big time, I'm just looking at this stuff, and I'm like, man, whatever, I put that away, that was my saving grace. Big old hallmark on it. No. No? No, it was a meteorite. Oh, you're kidding me. No. Oh, and I mean, wow. Cut. If, if you cut a meteor, iron meteorite open, you, there's these strange looking square designs and stuff inside, and that's what that is. And I didn't realize it until I got home to... Aliens hitching a ride. To, you know, to take a, a look rock. at my loot and maybe, you know, evaluate it a little bit, you know. And I picked this up and I immediately went, oh, that's what that is. And uh, so, so that... Definitely that took care that, of that would box. pay for the box. Yeah, yeah. Definitely so, pay for the box. So anyhow, that was kind of fun. Had a stalactite. There's a oh, wait, is it stalagmites on the bottom? Stalagmites on the yeah. bottom. Yeah. Uh, it was a stalagmite. There, big one. I mean, it must have weighed 40 pounds. You know. Oh, at the auction. At the auction. Not in your box. Piece. Okay. Highly illegal. Why would a stalactite or my well, be because illegal? you're defacing to get it. And this was a nice piece, too. <laughs> but I, I, I learned a couple things about the auctions. First one I went to here, I walk into the kitchen and there's these pots, you know, cooking pots, and they're full of alcohol bottles. You know, used alcohol, but there's alcohol in them, right? Okay. So I asked the lady, I said, so how do you get away with selling alcohol? You know, alcohol. It's just, if it's in a basket or a pot, it's just part of the stuff. I'm like, ha. Ah, that's how it works. Clever. Yeah. So, anyhow. There's a loophole. That was kind of cool. Uh, Don't then, say that too loud. Legislature will try to sew that up. Otherwise, uh, you know. Or a lot I've run into a couple things that uh, I, made the, I made the point of identifying to a auctioneer about... You know, I just want to let you know, I don't know if you know it, but you've got a box of things here that are actually illegal to possess. And he goes, what are they? And I'm like, well, they're uh, fighting rooster uh, spurs. You know, oh, the ones? oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he looked at me and says, so what? And you Who know cares? What? You know, and I'm like, okay, fine. I don't know how to do it. He, uh, he, uh, so I watched to see how that would sell, right? And they said, ah, oh, let's start with that box of hooks there. Hooks. <laughs> and I'm like, don't fish with them. I'm though. like, okay. And that box sold for $85. <laughs> somebody so people, knew, people somebody knew, what, knew what it yeah, was. Yeah, they knew what they did. They knew what that was. <laughs> 
Uh, I've got two pieces of ivory I've got to send to the, fish, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Yeah, you're not really supposed to possess that. Yeah, I know. Well, it came with, it was in a box. I didn't even notice them. Now, are you okay. sure it's not bone? No, it's ivory. It's ivory? I checked. It's ivory. Okay. So, you this morning. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, they've got a, they've got a protocol. Okay. And so I'm going to, you know, get, they've got a form and stuff that they send you and you fill it out and uh, I'm just going to send it to them. I, you know, I don't want to, I don't need it that bad. I, yeah, I, and, I, and mean, I don't care about it. I mean, I, I care why. Why? And you can't flip it. No, you, not you at can't all. flip it. Not at all. So, yeah, uh, it's illegal to possess it. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's a family heirloom or something like that, they'll 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 give you leeway on that. But then once you die, nobody else is supposed to have it. Yeah, kind of like eagle feathers. <laughs> that was another thing. A whole bunch of bows and. Oh, Quivers that's right. You said there was a whole arrow. bunch of Native American. There were eagle feathers all over them, and I'm like, you not, not, not touch those. Do not touch those. As a matter of fact, you can't own any raptor feather. What? Unless it's passed down to you. If it's gifted to you from uh, an authentic source, meaning like I've been gifted... Uh, Eagle feathers from um, oh, who was that shaman out of Washington? Came down, married Diane, and and then Tony's death. He officiated that. He stayed with us. I can't remember his name. Anyway, he had gifted me eagle feather, and he had. Uh, I think Tony's grandpa. I want to say his grandpa down in Sonoma. Um, California gifted me an eagle feather. If it comes from those sources and you are, uh, you know, Native American, then then that's okay. Yeah, I know. But you're not, you're not flipping that stuff. You know, no, that's no. sacred to you. No, it's code. But uh, yeah, there's. I know there's some. There is an angle there. There is a chain of custody kind of thing. So it reminds me, I, I did a, I had to do some training out in Montana um, at uh, Mount Scrum Air Force Base. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so while I was there, um, it happened to be a weekend, a Canadian holiday weekend. Hmm. And I remember rolling up to, you know, a motel and like to see if I could get a room for, because I was supposed to stay the weekend and then teach for three more days. And uh, lady says, I can, I can keep you in until Friday, but you have to get out on Friday. I'm like, why? She says, well, we got a Canadian holiday and it, it's all booked up. And she oh says, wow! And she says, I can bet you all the motels are booked up on the weekend. I went, oh, that's not good. So every day after I get done with class, I just I just drive a radius around uh, Great Falls, Montana, and I just I just kept you know that that, that day every motel same thing. So I had to spread it out further and further until I got pretty to, soon you're in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> I got to, uh, I went to Augusta, Augusta, Montana. Okay. Great place. Just really cool place. Uh, they actually have a one-day rodeo there that's on the circuit. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I got to go to it because, talk about a story. <laughs> I get to, I get, I get to Augusta, and uh, I stop at this bar called the Big Bighorn Bar, Elkhorn Bar, Elkhorn Bar, and I walk in. I'm sitting there and I'm having a beer and everything, and I look up in the corner and there's a, there's a, a golden eagle, mounted. Oh. And I'm looking. I'm like, whoa. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm talking to the bartender. I'm like, uh, is that legal? He says that that's been there since '56. So I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So, so it's kind of grandfathered in. 
and uh, and it's Montana. What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. It's been there at the beginning of the state. So, yeah, yeah. And it did look like yeah, it's been there for <laughs> a long time. No one's dusted it in a yeah. while. <laughs> so interesting. I I'm sitting there and I'm supping on my beer and everything. I'm talking to the bartender. He gets a phone call. And uh, he goes, uh, I'm listening, you know, I can hear him talking. He says, yeah, yeah, you guys are coming up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, just stay at mom's house and, and uh, you know, all this stuff. And um, I'm listening to the conversation and I'm like, I'm hearing some terms or some words being said that I'm like, boy, that's kind of close to home. Well, come to find out. The guy he was talking to was a guy that worked with me. Uh, and I can't think of his last name. His first name was Terry. But he said, all right, Terry, well, oh, looking forward to seeing you guys. And, you know, hung up. Well, that weekend was also that one-day rodeo that they have in Augusta. Uh-huh. Okay? Which I'm like, oh, can't find a place here to stay. Which all they had was an old, you know... An old west, uh, you know, you find out out in the west where it's a, a hotel and everybody shares the same bathroom, you know, and yeah, all this stuff. Common, you know, that kind of yeah. And uh, so he he said his last. Uh, his name was Terry Lennox. He said his he, he said his said something that I recognized. I'm like, I says, excuse me, person you're talking to. I says, is he from Minot? He looked at me. How do you know that? Well, I says, is his last name Lennox? How do you know that? I says, I work with Terry Lennox. <laughs> he goes, well, that's my brother-in-law. Oh, shoe in, talk. shoe in, man. And then it just it just came on me. Terry used to wear this satin jacket, and it said Elkhorn Bar, Augusta, Montana. I read it a thousand times. He never paid any mind to it, and it dawned on me. Oh, and this is his, his uh, in-law's bar. And he says, man, you got to stay here. And I'm like, well, I don't have any place to stay. And he says, let me make a phone call. Mom's got a room. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, How fortuitous is that? Well, the hotel was full. But he said, the, the lady that owns it, she has a fifth wheeler out back. Oh. I bet she could put you up in there. I'm like, I'm in, you know. Oh, well, wow. I didn't, I didn't end up staying there. I went down to talk to her about it. And I didn't end up staying there because... I ended up staying at the same house those guys, at their folks' house. Oh, okay. Pretty cool thing. Uh, Augusta, on that one-day rodeo, and I loved his, his mother-in-law. She was, she was a dynamo. She was dynamic. Fantastic lady. Uh, but uh, 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 she, uh, on that day, what they do is, it's a big party the night before, Okay. And there's only two bar. Well, at the time, there were only two bars in town, and they they remove everything: the chairs, the tables, the billiards, everything. It's just standing room only. Oh wow! And in town, you can if you get a drink at this bar, you can mosey on outside. And, oh yeah! And the place is just cowboy heaven. I mean, it's people everywhere. You know, like First, French quarters down in New yeah, Orleans. Like I said, it's Montana. So yeah. But uh, met some very cool people. Uh, got to go to the rodeo, and um, when I when I drove up the next day um, for to to stay the night, and then I noticed out in the out where the uh, uh, rodeo grounds was at, all kinds of airplanes, you know, little single engine little in airplanes. So I asked him. I said, "What's that?" He said, "Oh, those are pros that fly in. They do their slack, and then they take off. We won't even see them." Oh you know, wow! Yeah, and so they, that's what they do. They just come in, they did their thing, and that's a score, you know. Yeah. And they then they go. But the next day, the rodeo was. You had some professionals, but a lot of kids from like University of or Montana State or whatever in in, in uh, Bozeman or Butte, one of the two. They actually have rodeo classes, you know. And these guys, that's what they did. Oh my right? Those monsters. So that was kind of fun. I yeah. had fun and having Terry there, that was great. Made it, made it a little really cool. He introduced me to a photographer. Okay, guy Gus Wolf was his name, and uh, local legend, you know, photographer. He's been on two National Geographic's. 
uh, three Audubons, all kinds of other magazines and stuff, you know, right. covers. But uh, so went into a studio and oh god, he had some beautiful stuff. He had this one picture I really liked, and uh, uh, it was he was on, in Yellowstone and he did this picture of these buffalo early in the morning, you know, the morning sun and everything. And oh wow! Kind of running through this gap, little little gap. And they're kicking up dust and stuff like this, and it just—it looked like a what they used to call cibichrome, a cibichrome black and white picture. Oh, okay. It's, it's almost like a um, kind of a copperish look and everything to it. It was stunning, you know. And uh, you know, so I. Ansel Adams do anything like that? No, because you know, most of his was black. All most of his stuff was black. Yeah, and, and his fa his work was Adams' work was done in the dark room. That's where he did his real yeah. magic. Okay. He'd take the pictures and then dodge stuff and you get these outstanding clouds and you know stuff like that. That was yeah. his work. But anyhow, so you know, Gus is I told him, I says, Yeah, I thought I was a you know a photographer at one time, but you know, whatever. But he's showing me this work he had done on some baby uh, eaglets. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, I mean it's like Here's the nest. You're sitting there looking at it like this, you know what I mean? And I, yeah, I was done with a 10,000 power to telephoto. Well, so, I was on the other mountain range. Bridge. Yeah, I mean, the, I, mean it, it, I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the detail was just amazing. And I looked at him and said, so, you know, what, uh, what size lens did you use on this? He says 200. I went, what? 200? I said, 200? You had to have been right on top of me. He says, I was. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, Mom was out hunting. <laughs> no, he, uh, he said, I was in the next tree. I built a blind in the next tree over. And he said, I'd have to go up there when it was dark, yeah. get in there, and sit all day. Because, I, you know, he says, you don't want to be climbing out of a tree with an eagle next to you going, there's a threat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip his head off. <laughs> He said, "I'd have feed to feed his eyeballs to my baby." Wait until dark wow. to get out of that thing. Oh, oh my wow. oh, God! Ain't no picture worth that to me. Yeah. But it was an amazing layout. Just an amazing wow. layout. Wow. So yeah, that ah. was kind of cool. Gus was awesome. I mean, and I asked him about the pictures. He says, "So, so, uh, what do you want for this picture?" He says, "Well, right now I have a part-time job, so sixty-five dollars." And I'm like. You can't give me anything else? He says, if I wasn't working, I would, I would give you a break. I said, oh, the starving artist. <laughs> yeah. He says, but right now I can go premium on them. And I'm like, fine, Danny. Yeah. I didn't get it, but, you know. 65 bucks. Yeah. It was a nice. That would have been a steal. It probably would have been. But I'm like, what? So, anyhow, yeah. I guess well, and he's a published photographer, too. So, oh, yeah. You know. I, yeah, I know. I told him... I, I told those guys, I says, if I ever need to disappear, I'm coming up here. He goes, yeah, that's fine. Um, to Montana? Up around Augusta, up by the Bob Marshall Wilderness. Oh, okay. They're right, they were right on it. Oh, okay. A matter of fact, I met another guy that uh, they, uh, he was a uh, hunting guide, but they had, uh, and you know, for elk hunts and stuff like that. They they had a place that their dad had got it, and they lease it from the uh, wild uh, fish and wildlife uh -huh. service, a 99 year lease. Oh wow! And uh, beautiful. I mean, it's the classic. Yeah. You step out back of their house, and there's a creek running by. Oh, you need a couple trout? No, they're all over in there. You know, just go out and scoop what you need. Yeah, yeah. It was, and uh, they had built cabins for you know their customers and stuff, and. and uh, I mean, the mounts that they had in there, the elk mounts and stuff, were just amazing. But uh, I asked him, I says, uh, his name was Travis. Travis, Travis, Travis. I can't think of his last name now, but I said, so do you do any hunting? He says, no, nah, I haven't, I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't pulled a bead on anything in years. Yeah. I'm like, why? And he says, don't have time, you know. All right. What they do is they've got camps out in the bob what they call the bob the bob marshall wilderness and that's all you know that's all government land all right. and um, 
huge restrictions on it. You can't take a vehicle out there. Oh, okay. So you have to pack in. Right. And then if you've got a camp up there, you have to stock that camp, even if you're not using it. Keep it fully stocked with food, hay, and stuff like that so that the if there's like a fire or something that they need to get into the back, the Forest Service can use that. Now, they'll restock it for them, but it's sure. ready for them. Yeah. Like, that's pretty cool. Plus... There's a runway up there for firefighting. I mean, the prettiest runway you ever saw in your life, man. Uh, it's it, and it's on the, it's in the, uh, the wilderness there area, and it's for firefighting. So they can get planes up in there, and they can, you know, have a staging area. Oh right, you know, sure. And stuff like that. And it's pretty. They keep it pristine. Yeah. And I'm telling you, um, remember that that accident investigation I did in Alaska? I told you about that. Well, anyhow. I think so, yeah. So I'm taking off from Minneapolis. We're flying right over Montana, and I'm like, I bet you can see that from there. And I kept watching. Sure enough, there it was. I'm like, <laughs> beautiful thing. <laughs> so I, I, I met a lot of cool people, and, and uh, I recommend, you know, neat place to go to. It's I don't know what it's like state. now. I don't know what it's like now. But uh, uh, folks up there, really, really good folks. Yeah. You know, I enjoyed it. Yeah, and the rodeo was fun. I mean, and I remember we were at the bar, and his and uh, Terry's uh, mother-in-law comes in and says, "I got your tickets. Now make sure you get there." Which you know, two blocks away from us. <laughs> okay. uh, not for me. Thank you. No. Nope. nope. Told you why. Cardio. Cardio man. So, but anyhow, that was a. <laughs> that was a cool trip. I enjoyed that. <coughs> uh, there's some beautiful country around here, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. There's some right here. Well, that's the thing. I mean, this state right here has got some absolutely stunning, stunning. landscape. Beautiful country. Especially the more north you go. And, you know, when I blasted out of here after Mary... Mary passed away. You know, I went at you know northeast, and uh, just absolutely breathtaking landscape what? over there on the east side of this state. Yeah, this whole state's got some beautiful stuff to it. It's really amazing. What time's your appointment in Hot Spring? Oh, it's in Texas County, but it's oh, in Texas County. Okay, you can, you can get yep. a lot done. Mow the lawn. Living in North Dakota. Oh, that was something else I wanted to say about uh, about the round Earth, the borealis effect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's Which, if, that's if, the dome yeah. that it's bending. Oh, is that what? That yeah, is? yeah. That, okay. It's got to be the dome. Sure. You can come up with anything. But I can remember one morning I was driving out to the base. Yeah, like flat earth. No. And uh, I'm looking at the, you know, in the distance and everything, there were some cottonwood trees by this farm. And, you know, it's really flat there. Mm -hmm. That's real flat. And, uh, but there was moisture in the air. And it literally made these, looks like, it's a mirage. I know it's a mirage, but that's made the trees look like they were like 15 times taller than they were. It was really right. interesting. Right. Plus, um, I don't know. If, I know what people say is St. Elmo's fire. You know, uh, pilots will tell you about it. It's electricity that runs along the windows as they're, you know, as they're running. Oh. Okay. You know, in, I, in, in the cockpit, most right. basically, and uh, and you'll get some green stuff on that. But I read an article in Reader's Digest one time about uh, where the sun, if you can catch it on, like on the ocean, they see it all the time. Where basically, as the sun goes down, just as it's just going past the horizon, yeah, 
you'll get this green, looks like just a green flame, and then it, it goes, which is, I, I imagine it's just the angle of the light going through the moisture at that time, right. and it's 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 pushing out the green. Right. But I actually saw that in North Dakota. Flat. It's got to be flat. Flat. Well, can't measure this. Being on, can't measure it with this. Being on the ocean as much as I had been, um, you know, you're. Yeah, but you were on a you were on a ship, which is right. You're not getting that. You're not getting that steady look at it. Right. Right. Well, and that's not the that's not the case all the time. I mean, most of the time it was, but there were times when it was just like glass. <clears throat> and you're just, you know, tootling along. And, uh, you know, there's just no way that the earth can be flat when you see other vessels coming up over the horizon or going over the horizon. It's not like they're dropping off the edge or anything like that. So, so is the dome rounded? <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. I think the dome is rounded. Why couldn't you make a square dome? You know, uh, yeah, for a I don't other know. shape. I don't know. No, I never was a believer of all that stuff. I mean, the guy had some compelling points, but I'm like, yeah, no. I'm sorry. I, I just uh, yeah, can't we buy went, it. We went through this years ago. Columbus was worried about falling off the edge. All that stuff, and he did several times. Yeah, fell off many times. Wound up Ran on the Caribbean, <laughs> pushed his ship right over the edge. Yeah, then he found the Caribbean. Found the Caribbean. You know, plenty yeah. of rum and slaves. Yeah. yeah, and decided to stay. Gold, plenty of gold shipped back to that woman of his. Yeah. What was her name? Queen. Uh, Queen something. That. Yeah, that too. fronted fronted all the ships and cash to. Oh, I've been watching Shogun, the new uh, series. Uh, it's based on the book uh, uh, Clavel wrote years ago, Shogun. Yeah. And uh, and I have to thank you, Dave, because he's the one that turned me on to it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Years and years ago, I turned I read it. And uh, I love the book, and uh, um, but the the series is kind of neat. Hey, what's that on? Um, FX. It's, you can get it through your Roku. I'll look for it. Um, but yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm enjoying that. And then uh, Liz and I are watching this uh, called Tokyo Vice. Oh, Tokyo Vice? Have you, have you uh, seen? I haven't seen that. So I was worried a little bit because there's a lot of um, closed caption. You have to, because, you know, they're making it, I mean, it's trying to keep it on a realistic angle, right? Interesting story. Um, and, you know, because I've, you know, I guess because I read Shogun years ago, and I knew a couple of people that had married uh, um, uh, women out of uh, from Japan and stuff. And, you know, there's a the culture is is not dynamic. I won't say static, but it's not dynamic. It holds, you know, it well, it holds things so tight that it it, it breaks it. Yeah. You know, I'll give you an example. You know. Years ago, it was save, save, save. Save your money in Japan. Save yeah. your money. Yeah. Well, they did, and they saved it so long, they had to make them spend it. Because they literally ruined their economy. There's no money There's moving. There's nothing circulating. Yeah, no money yeah. moving. And, you know, you can't have an, an economy if the money's not If, you, if the money's you not. got to move the money around. Yeah, that's, the cur that's why it's called currency. It's like electricity. Yeah. If you don't have the electrons running, you ain't got no lights on. <laughs> I watched a good movie last night on uh, Prime, uh, Emperor, Emperor, Emperor. Yeah, uh, Tommy Lee Jones plays General MacArthur. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's 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 the rebuild 
of Japan after uh, the atomic bomb drops and about the premise of it is is the emperor guilty of war crimes yeah I, re I remember reading about that yeah I read a book about that one yeah time. I don't remember what it was. well they did a real good job of it so if you're uh, you know get an opportunity that's a good one I'd recommend that one would have had to head that off in that in that um, um, society had to, you could not let that happen well and the, and, and the other thing, the delicate balance was is that the, the, the people saw the emperor as a god. Right. You know, and they would, uh, the revolt would have been catastrophic. Um, right. If, if, you know, we didn't handle that properly. And, uh, but it's, it's a real good, it's a real good, uh, I, I thought the work was done really well. So that, that would be something that I would definitely throw out there to watch. I haven't really watched anything else. There, most of it's all regurgitated old garbage. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, so, no. let me go so back to YouTube. When I was <laughs> still living in the RV, you know, and I had that super great uh, fiber cable and stuff, and I could watch stuff. I started watching a series called Banshee. Okay, had an interesting twist. Guy gets out of prison, ends up in this town looking for this his old partner, and she's already moved on and married, you know, and all this stuff. And he ends up in this town, sitting at this bar, and. Uh, the bartender had been uh, in prison, so they had this in common thing. Okay. And as you can see, somebody had some food sitting on the, on the bar, and this guy comes walking out, and uh, I think I told you about this. He, yeah. He's from Oregon. Uh, the sheriff. Yeah, the sheriff. He gets killed there, and this guy assumes his identity. That was the that was unique part of it. But we're watching it. I think we got into about you know four episodes, and it was just... Just extreme, incredibly not going to happen violence. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, this guy's getting away with stuff. There's no way people aren't going to figure this out. Right. And they might, maybe they do find out. But it's just, uh, you know, if there's a world like that, I don't want to know. Yeah. And so we stopped watching it. Be surprised how ugly things are out oh, there. I, I know. I know. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, that was. Uh, we stopped watching that. I, I says you can watch it if you want, but it's just. Uh, well, you told me about you told me about Banshee, and, and I went looking for it. And I oh, it's a rent. I had yeah. It was like no, I'm not paying no money for nothing. I paid too much money as it is for this. Let's see. Why do we get it? Because we got it free. What on Roku? You don't have Roku, do you? Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Yeah, it didn't cost us. But. Yeah, I'm like, uh, well, and I looked from, I looked at it from Prime, and it was for rent. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't paying no, nothing. It, it wasn't on Prime. It was. I don't have Roku set up on my computer. I've got it on my TVs, obviously, but not on my computer. <laughs> No, thanks. I'm not paying nothing. Well, it's like that new movie that came out, Beekeeper. Yeah, yeah. Is that any good? Yeah. It's like $30 to rent it. Oh, I'm like, I'll wait. Ain't nothing out there. Ain't nothing out there. Yeah, I'll Entertaining. Wait. Yeah. Throw 30 bucks out. Ain't going to do it. No. Um, oh, I was going to tell you some more about this, this auction. Um, so... When I first started going, the first one I went to up in Glenwood, I was talking to this guy, and he pointed this lady out, and white hair, you know, you could tell she was a beauty in her day, and still beautiful for an older woman. Yeah. But, uh... Is this a glass woman? The uh, that buys a glass? Well, she does buy glass, but, uh... So, he, he told me, he says, if she's bidding... Forget it. Yeah. You know, unless you've mortgaged your house and you've got a lot of cash in you, she's not going to let 
you have it. It's not going to happen. I'm like, okay, well, it's nice to know. Well, I got to talking to her yesterday, and I bought her a fried pie, and we got to talking. And it turns out, well, we got to talking about, I, I said, yeah, I got to sit down all the time because of my knees. It's just <coughs> driving me crazy. She says, well, I had both my hips replaced. I'm like, oh, how did that go? She says, well, no pain. I'm okay with that. I says, oh, all right, that's cool. She says, I used to be a ballerina. You're kidding me. Wow. I looked at her and I'm like, so, wait a minute. So that's how you threw your hips out. So, are you telling me that when you make those wonderful, beautiful jumps and, and you flitter down like that? She says, yeah, it's a controlled crash. A uh, controlled crash. I says, and you glide around like that? She says, yeah, it's all controlled. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I says, okay. So I thought that was interesting. But I thought she had a shop or something, you know, that she's uh -huh. buying all this stuff. No, sir. So she bought a bunch of stuff that... I, you know, I probably could have, probably could have got it, you know, sold pins with crystals on it and stuff like that. Yeah. She says, oh, look what I got. And I'm like, she says, I have like a jar full of these. And I'm like, well, I says, uh, so what do you do with it? She says, well, I need three houses to, <laughs> to display my stuff. I said, do you have it? No, I have one big one. <laughs> So she's just buying it. Thank you. Isn't that something? She's just buying it. And I'm just, like, okay, well, that's cool. And that's why you're not going to get it. If she thinks it needs to go in her house, you ain't getting it, buddy. <laughs> oh, I tell you. <laughs> there's quite an interesting character. There's uh, one of my clients in Nashville. Uh, she's 90-something. Her husband was a judge here in town. And I guess they spent a lot of time in the Orient because she has... Inside her house, she has pieces that those should be in museums. Uh -huh. They shouldn't be in your house. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like you have someone come in and dust all this stuff. I mean, and I'm talking about exquisite Oriental pieces. And uh, I, I'm like, what are you going to do with this? And and I don't know if she has any children or not, but. Oh, Just another state sale. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you, man. It was delicious. No, I'm uh, actually. Yeah, I'll have a half cup. Thank you. Uh, your age. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. Nope. I mean, uh, no. No. <laughs> Told you. She's lying. Day over nineteen. She's lying. Twenty nine. 29, if that, pushing it. Maybe 29. <laughs> Dick and Rose Bush. Well, I don't have any. Can you see it? Well, did I, I transplanted her rose bush and it attacked me. Well, let me tell you, you're doing great. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Sometimes I don't feel like that. Oh. <laughs> Rosebush got you, huh? Yeah. Oh. Stupid rosebush. Okay. This is the Grace Green coming out of me. I know oh. you got it. Oh. Uh, so no, don't do it. I told you about my Tomcat, the, the little kitten that jumped up in the car, and I had to have the, the uh, body guys, body work, uh, body shop guys taken out. I, I, I love telling that story because it's like I roll up and I go, do you guys do emergencies? And they're looking at me like, uh, well, I guess. He says, I got a kitten in the cowling of the front bumper here. And these guys are like, all right, you go get this, you can get that, and get the jack and everything. I mean, before I could even turn We're up. saving a life here. <laughs> they're jacking the car up, and, and I'm like, well, okay. I got that little sucker out. Well, okay, he's turned into a cute little... Tomcat, right? Uh -huh. Now all my cat, the other two cats are fixed, yeah. all right, and that's what. And he's his day's coming April first, all right. But what what happened in between that is I'm sitting there watching TV and I'm looking out the window and I see a car park stop just up from the neighbors, right? Okay. And, and whenever you see a, a car stop, you know something's going. They're on. throwing something out. <laughs> Oh geez. So they threw two cats out, and and, oh, and people suck. And those cats just sat on the road, 
And when they drove off, I, and I'm getting up, going to go get in the car and everything, but I, they got away from me. I, I thought I had them. I thought I had them in Mineral Springs, and uh, a guy got in front of me and decides I'm going to drive like it's 1918, you know. And so, fine, I lost them. That's fine. So I come back. That's why I'm, you need one of those brush guards on your truck <laughs> or car. <laughs> yeah, I got a story about that, too. But anyhow, um, uh, so I come back, and I just I didn't go all the way up. I pulled up about you know 50 yards away and, and they're just still sitting there and I'm like well I can tell it's two at least and uh, so I'm like I'm just not going to get involved you know I'm not going to do it so I told Liz about it and I'm just going to just I'm keep not, it for a week nope I'm not going to do it I'm not going to do anything with it five and years I'm, later and I'm sitting sitting there and watching TV with Liz and I keep looking over and they haven't moved and another thing, no cars came down the road. I'm like, well, that's weird because I'm figuring everybody can sense it on both sides <laughs> of Barthel. <laughs> oh, we'll just go to Tallit. Yeah. So, so it's like Grace Green is in my ear. You got to do something. You you don't need to be like those people. We all have yeah, the yeah, cat whisper yeah, trait. You got to do something. And finally, I looked at Liz and said, I got to do something. And so we went down there with the four wheeler. And a box to assess the situation. And Do I need to give you one of my cat cages? So you, no, no. I'm, uh, are I'm, you sure? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay, because I'd be happy to do that. I'm, I'm good. I, uh, yeah, because I've got, I've got a big carrier. Yeah, cage, I've got a little one. And I've got a smaller cage. And okay. I've got a cat carrier. Okay, you're good to go. Then. Yeah. So, okay. So <laughs> we're looking them over, and one of them's in really pretty good shape. Uh -huh. And uh, the other one is completely emaciated. You know? Oh, uh, I mean, I, at first I thought it had mange, but I think it was just starved to death. Yeah. So I says, "What are you gonna do? Can't I'm not gonna. I can't. You know, can't do that. Yeah. I mean, other people could just walk up and shoot them. And that's fine. Yeah. That's that's them, not me. So I've got two cats down in the barn, in the big dog cat cage. In the barn. With yeah. the horse? Yeah, but on the not with the horse, but where the horse goes. Oh, okay. I've got a I've got a bench up there, and they're sitting up there, and uh, we're fattening them up. And for two days, they wouldn't eat. They wouldn't eat, drink, or anything. Oh. And then went back down there, and sure enough, food's gone. I'm like, all right, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. This one is really pretty. Uh, the emaciated one is either Himalayan or or. Uh, um, um, Siamese mix, oh, okay. you know, with a tabby or something like that. Yeah. Now. But uh, really pretty, beautiful blue eyes, all that kind of stuff. How old are they? You I think was, uh, about the same age as my tomcat. Oh, okay. And that became a problem right there because they're both females. And he's going to find them. Oh, he found them already. Oh, okay. And I told Liz this, like yesterday, the the one that's in better shape. Started doing that uh, acting crazy like it was on catnip and stuff, and I'm like, I says he's already got her in heat, and I says they got to stay there until he gets done. Yeah, and then we can let them out because there's no other tomcats around. Because I can tell you, Gus doesn't allow that and right. along with the dogs. So anyhow, I told her I says once he's done, we can let him get out. But I says right now we're gonna. You know, fatten them up, and they are. They're coming along. I'm feeding them high fat, and yeah, you know, uh, getting them, getting them, and they're they're starting to get it, you know, figured out. Uh, the the emaciated one is starting to fill out a little better, and and uh, um, getting her hair starting to look a little better and stuff like that. But uh, the you know, I just. Every time I have to go out there and, and take care of them, like, what is wrong with me? Mom syndrome. Yeah, I know. Mom syndrome. You know, I Mom. remember that cat that got run over in front of our house. You remember that? In Winston? And and Mom, it was our cat, brought it in, and I'm like, its back's broken, you know. And, and Mom nursed that thing back. I mean, it spent... 
That wasn't Tom, was it? No, no, no. no I didn't think that was it Tom. It spent, I don't know, two weeks on the floor on a towel. Yeah, Mom would just feed it and take care of it and stuff. Ugh. Mom syndrome. Yeah. She's the only one that could call feral cats to her. Oh. We couldn't, you know. We're talking mm -hmm. about the lady that had a, a rabbit that had a broken back. And it was the pet, you know, around the house. Did you eat your mom? And do you ever hear the story about um, Ted and David? I think Dad was in the war at the time. Ted and David caught a hawk. Did you ever hear that story? Uh -uh. No, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to tell it exactly right, but this is how I got it. Um, they had a hawk, and they used to go down. There was a pond by the house. They'd sane fish and feed it to this hawk. Well, it got bigger and bigger, and it started getting a little more cocky. And I guess Mom had, had gone out to the clothesline, got some clothes, and was walking in with the basket and everything, and is sitting on the porch. Standing at the top of the steps there at the porch, and it's like <laughs> at her and stuff. And she started to come up, and, it's like, <laughs> and, she, and she's like, Shoo, shoo, shoo. And it wouldn't do it. Mom put the clothes down, went and got a, uh, uh, a broom, knocked its head off. <laughs> cats, yes. Hawks, she, no. Yeah, she's. <laughs> hawks carry cats away. Yeah. <laughs> Mom did the math. Yeah, not it. Yep. That's, <laughs> uh, I'm like, yeah. I t as a matter of fact, who was telling it? And mom chimed in on it. Yeah, that's pretty much how it happened. <laughs> Remember that time? I think you you had found that owl. We were in the old Phil Waters place, and you brought that owl in in our bedroom. Oh man, I forgot about that. Remember that? Yeah. His wing was all janked out and everything. And we're like, I'm like, man, there's maggots in that wing for crying out loud. It'll 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 bounce back. I don't know what happened to it. I, don't I think either, you because, uh, threw it out in the it's not cool peach to have orchard. An owl in your bedroom. No. And it was creepy. Yeah. Well it was cool to me for a little Well, time. I mean, yeah. I, but, I think I was listening to more uh Alice Cooper back then. <laughs> Well, the fact that this thing would turn its head all the way around, you know, and swivel on its shoulders. <laughs> well, like, as long as it didn't puke green. <laughs> it didn't do that, but I'm like, ugh. You know, I caught another creepy. owl up in North Dakota. We were, boys and I were bird hunting and come around, go out to this field, and there's a, there's one hung up in a barbed wire fence. Mm -hmm. And it had damaged its, its wing and everything. And I thought, well, I'll take it to the zoo because we live right Cross, pretty much across from the Roosevelt Zoo there, and I'll just get it and and uh, take it on in, you know. Yeah, they fed, so it, got, fed it to the crocodile. I've got, I've got Jason and Clint sitting here, <laughs> and I had these uh, kind of like um, what we call them Arctic winter mitten kind of things, but they weren't they weren't cowhide; they were deer hide. The muff muffs. Yeah, big ones. And I thought, well, I'll get him with that. I got him. You know, and I told the boys, open the door, I'll just put him in the floor, right? So I put him in the floor. This thing grabbed my, these gloves, and you know how they, how their legs, you know, how their talons, they'll collapse. They collapse. Yeah. That's how they can get into stuff, you know? Yeah. Man, they just collapsed right down my hand. <laughs> Went right through that leather. <laughs> you just slung the owl and the glove oh, away. Yeah, I put it down, got out of that and everything. That wasn't the scariest part. I didn't know about this kind of stuff. So we're heading back to town and everything, and, and uh, I, uh, you know, we go straight to the zoo. But all the time we're there, this thing is looking at us, and it's snapping its beak. I mean, snap! Got your attention. <laughs> it really got I think that attention. owl at the, at, the at the house did the same thing. It would snap his beak. Okay, well, I, I don't remember all that. S scared me. Didn't like it. Well, that scared me. Cause I'm like... <laughs> Got my kids in here. <laughs> so I went over there and they, they graciously took it off my hands. Because they had a big uh, they had a big uh, area where it was all screened in and oh an Avery. You know, an Avery kind yeah. of thing. And yeah. so that was uh, I'd go over there once, well, that's my owl, I think. Yeah, they fed that thing to the reptile yeah. exhibit. 
Yep. <coughs> Man. They had an eagle there with one wing. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, wow. It was it was cool to look at from one side. <laughs> Flying circles. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would say that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Remember Ted? Ted was uh, doing something. He was, uh, I don't know what he was doing. It was out in the woods. I think I was here in Arkansas. Ran into uh, the skunk mom. Oh, yeah. got killed, and all the babies came up to his cat. <laughs> and he's like, you know, mom yeah. syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Come on, my oh, little God. ones. Yeah, he took all those baby skunks up to the house and. Fed them and took care of them, you know. I, I think we all have that. Mom mom had imparted that gene to all of us. That was one of the coolest Well, things. except for David. Turtle boiler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turtle boiler. I, I need a turtle skeleton. Mr. Biology. I shall boil it <laughs> and then burn the house down. No, I remember him doing that. Yeah. yeah. Bringing those turtles from uh, Arkansas. Terrapins. Yeah. Yeah. And one of them died underneath the, the seat and stuck the car up and all that. <laughs> can you, I can remember all of us sitting in the back seat. All of us. Man. Yeah. yeah. And with Now, is that with Aunt Vira? No, no. This was just the, us three. That was the first trip. Or, well, jo- not the first trip, but the earlier trip. Because Dave he- came along that time. Did Dave come along that time? Yeah, you were Six, sixty-eight. Is the only no, time I remember. It was 60, yeah. Might have been sixty-one. I don't think you were hatched yet. Yeah, mom was just carrying me around in her belly. Maybe. I had a front row seat. Yeah, maybe. Well, if it was sixty-one. I just born then. Or uh, it might have been earlier than that. No, I think uh, it might what? have been fifty-nine. Well, they, Dave was, they uh, went to Oregon in 52. Isn't that right? 50, cause well, I think it was 59 was that trip. And uh, Dave Dave was a junior or senior in high school. Because all that stuff, those turtles he boiled and all that stuff, it was projects for school, I guess. I, I, you know, I'm just assuming. And then... Uh, all for science. Yeah. Whatever. And then he went... Then he went into the Air Force after that. And then to Vietnam. Well, I remember David telling us a story about a... I, wouldn't, I don't think it was an RPG or something like that, but a mortar that went whizzing by their head and headed into their dorm out there. Uh, I, don't, I don't recall that story. Yeah, he could have died that day. I, do a, I had a friend that... Uh, <laughs> His name was Don Weibel. Don was from San Bernardino, went into the uh, the Marines. Mm-hmm. He uh, Marine recon, you know, rucked the bush for you know a year and uh, decided to uh, change. Uh, he went into he he transferred over to the Air Force and he said that's when I got hurt. <laughs> he was I forgot what base, probably Tonsonut or something like that, and uh, he said I was you know. I took a shower. I was walking down the hall to my my room, and he said, "I heard these, you know, the missiles or the mortars or whatever it was come in. It had to have been a missile, I think." And uh, he said, "I just took off. I'm on the second floor." He said, "I just took off for the, you know, to the back door." And and he said, "By the time when I opened up the door, it hit the hit the dorm and just blew him out onto the grass." <laughs> and he says, "My, you know, he showed me his back's all chopped up and stuff from there." Yeah. And uh, he uh, um, he said, yeah, he says, I go in the Air Force and I get hurt. I went in the Air Force not to get hurt. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. That, that'll learn you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that recruiter lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> he was a pretty cool guy. Someone sold you a bill of goods. Don was a cool guy because, uh, first, he had a great sense of humor. And secondly, he retired as a senior master sergeant, okay, in Minot. Right? Uh-huh. And then he... When I got out of the Air Force and went to work for the Air Force, working on the, the missile system, uh, it was a, basically revitalizing them and stuff. It was a, a nine-year project. Um, uh, Don, uh, you know, 
I was talking to him, you know, I said, so you retired and everything. He says, so where were you at? And he says, well, I ended up in uh, Germany and Britain. And I said, so what did you do? And he says, I coached football. I went, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I coached football, Air Force teams. He coached at uh, um, Spangdalem. Oh, I got his, uh, Han Air Force Base. And then he, and, and Lake and Heath. And uh, he coached the football teams. And I says, okay. He says, yeah, he says, those. it's pretty important over there. It puts stars on, you know, on, on uh, Colonel's uh, uh, shoulders. I'm like, oh, I got you. I got you. And he says, uh, he says, I says, so what did you do when you, you know, off season and everything? He says, oh, I was an IG inspector. <laughs> Like, for God's sake. <laughs> IG inspector? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Run around inspecting bases. I'm like, hmm, hmm, big, big time. <laughs> Probably looking for recruits for his oh, football teams. Oh, that was a gimme. Oh, yeah. He had some, uh, he, he, he had some All-Americans. He had, I believe he said he had three guys that actually, when they got out, they went, they went into the NFL. Did they? Yeah. So I'm like, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. You know, all his players are, co- you know, college players. So he had a pick of the litter, especially during that time. Yeah. You know, nobody wanted to go to Vietnam or anything. So, but anyhow, that was, he was quite a character. He just loved to give me crap. He loved to give me crap, but nicest guy. Uh, he invited us out for Christmas uh, dinner. <laughs> my whole family and I, I'm like, you sure you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met my kids? <laughs> he, he said, I said, yeah, you know, my kids are like the epitome of unruly. And he goes, well, I've got two big dogs. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He told me a story. Now, he's outside of Velva, North Dakota, had a little place, about 22 acres. And uh, he said, man, I got an electric bill that just, wow, how could this be, you know? And he said, I went out to the meter, and I'm looking at it, and he said, this thing is just, you know? And he said, I went in the house, turned off the turned off the uh, uh, breaker, the main breaker. There's nothing running. I went out there. He says, he says, so it's got to be the meter, right? And I'm like, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. He says, uh, so I called the rural electric place, which was in Belvedere. And they sent a guy out and said, well, there's nothing we can do about that. And I says, and he goes, why? And uh, he says, well, there's nothing wrong with that meter. And he says, look at the meter. It's spinning out of control. He says, well, that's not enough for us to replace it. He says, what would be enough to replace it? He says, well, let's say the glass was broken or something. And he, he, goes, he goes, okay. So the guy leaves. He walks down to his bar, grabs this ladder, big ladder. He says, I leaned the top of it onto the meter, picked it up, let it go. <laughs> Called him and says, oh, I had a, um, accidentally broke the meter glass on this thing. You might as well, guys want to come out and check it. He said it wasn't 30 minutes. They were out there and changed it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. Oh, broken glass, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can manipulate the meter, can oh. you? So, anyway. And never did, un- and the new meter obviously corrected the problem. Oh, yeah, so yeah. it was the meter. Yeah, it was the meter. Oh, my word. So, but yeah, he was a, he was quite the guy. That's just like down at the shop, you know, I had moved out of the shop and the monthly electric bill was about 11 bucks, right? Because yeah. nothing's running right. in it. And then one month it gets like 97 bucks, and I'm calling Swepco and I'm saying, this building's not even being used. So, well, what did they say? Something to the effect, well, they just take the average. I said, that ain't average. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, they corrected that, but I'm like, man, you have to. You have to go to, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Have to go yeah, to push the issue. Yeah, push the issue. We just got our letter that uh, our water prices are going up. Uh, Nashville has uh, put a four hundred thousand dollar bill on the rural water, so everybody gets to pay. You know. Oh yeah. I'm like, well, that's that's the norm. Makes me want to open up my well again. 
<laughs> I'm gonna do it anyhow. But I mean, I, why not? But, I mean, but, uh, <clears throat> the problem with the well is um, it needed a work over. You know, new pipe and stuff. I mean, I can't even put one of those pumps that you can put down that pushes. Yeah. I can't do that because the pipe's only that big. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you'd have to have that rebored out and yeah. new casing put in. Yeah, yeah. So. But uh, um, but you know, price is going up. I've got a great pump for it, so I might. I, I've been meaning to do this, but I think once I get my knees done, I can get around a little better. I'm gonna start working on these. Start doing that. I, yeah. get done. I get a letter in the mail from from SWAT. That's my fiber. Yeah, we're gonna lower your price. We're gonna lower your monthly cost, and we're gonna give you a gigabyte. I was paying for 500. They're giving me a gigabyte. Lowered my price. So I go into one of my routers and I go, okay, well, what am I getting now? 900 and something. And I know that's because my buddy at SWAT had over provisioned my service. Yeah. So he, he says, I want to make sure you always get 500. Well, it was always at seven or 800. Well, now it's still at 800 and 900, but I'm not at that gig, so I need to reach out to him and say, are you coming into town? Let me buy you lunch. <laughs> I need you to over-provision for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, should we get out of here? What are we up to? We're at an hour 50 minutes. Yeah, I guess that's kind of the average. Probably want to use this table and put some other people here. Sure. Uh, well... Terry's, Terry's place here in Murfreesboro. Oh, nobody said anything about my haircut. I got oh, a haircut. Oh, you got a haircut? Yep. I got to get a haircut. I got a wall set. I should uh, have Karen cut my hair. We'll have at it. I didn't have anything to trade this time, so I had to pay full price. Oh, did you go to John? Yeah, I went to John. Remember last time I... I had these two bottles. I, I said, these are for barbers. No. What, do you, well, what do you want for it? Haircut? No. Sit down. <laughs> I love John. Yeah. yeah. I thought I had him. Uh... Well, you know, last auction I took Shivani and Jeremy, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there were some items there that I thought, I can get haircuts out of those. Because there was a, like, I'd never seen one of these. I don't know. I guess maybe it was for mustaches and beards but it's a straight razor but it's got it's got a comb on it oh so okay so i thought well i bet he doesn't have one of those and there's a haircut you know i'd probably pick it up for two bucks you know i'll take it so i'm always looking out for that kind of stuff barter oh and something david told me to look for um if you ever run into a muriel cigar mm -hmm. box oh okay if you happen to see one somewhere pick it up <clears throat> Muriel, meaning a picture on it? No, Muriel? Muriel cigars. Oh, Muriel. You don't remember those? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were low-end cigars, but that's, you know, but it was, it's called Muriel. M Muriel cigars. I'm trying to remember. Those weren't the gold boxes, gold trim boxes, yeah, cardboard they, boxes. They all kind of look like that. Oh, yeah, okay. but th th that's what they look like. But the picture of the lady on it, he knows the lady. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He knows the model. She's a friend of hers. Was she Cuban? I don't. Did she hand roll those with her no, thighs? I don't know. I was just curious. No, she didn't. She was 16 years old when they did her picture. Yeah. She didn't make a penny off of it. Oh, that's wrong. Yeah, it's back in the day. Yeah. Just be grateful you're on there. <laughs> she was also a dancer, ballerina. Oh yeah. Yeah, and she's married to. Uh, a retired master sergeant, Air Force master sergeant, and uh, I met him. He's security at this casino over on the coast there, that big casino. I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> the one Dave, Dave took us there and says, I got a system. <laughs> so Got a system. Yeah, spent all my money, spent all his money. I'm like, how'd that system work? Oh, yeah. uh, it's just not today. <laughs> <laughs> it only works on Tuesdays. <laughs> Bye, guys. You ain't even gonna say bye to everybody. Oh. <clears throat> oh Lord, he's gonna he's gotta write it out first. No, it's uh, what's that song? Uh, 
Doesn't have anything to do with pie, does it? No, it's uh, the world is round. No, <laughs> the world is round. That's all I gotta say. Alan, the world's round. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.